शिवाय नम शिवाय नम शिवाय ओम नम शिवाय नम शिवाय नम शिवाय Adhikarna 3 Characteristics of the Liberated Soul Sutra 5 Brahmena Jaimenir Upanyasa Dibhyaha Brahmena as possessed of the attributes of Brahma Jaimenihi says Jaimeni Upanyasa Adhibihi, on account of the references, etc. Translation. Jaimini says that from references, etc. in the Upanishads, it is evident that the liberated soul becomes established in the attributes that Brahman has. This is well settled now that in the text, in its own form, Chandogya 8.12.3, what is meant is that it becomes established in itself as the self, and not in any extraneous adventitious form. But now, when the desire to know in detail arises, it is being said that in its own form means in the form of Brahman that is its own real form, and that is possessed of the characteristics, beginning with freedom from sin, etc., and ending with true desire. Chandogya 871, as also omnipresence and rulership over all. It becomes established in that form, which is its own. This is how the teacher Jaimini thinks. How is this known? For such a fact is known from the references in the Upanishads and other reasons, that is, fresh information, etc. Thus it is that through the very reference contained in the text beginning with this self that is beyond sin, etc., and ending with having true desires and inevitable will, ibidam. The Upanishad makes us understand that the individual soul is the same as the supreme self possessing these attributes. Similarly, through the fresh information in the text, there he roams about eating, playing, and making merry. Chandogya 8.12.3, as also he gets freedom of movement in all the worlds. Chandogya 7.25.2 It presents its form of divine majesty. From this viewpoint, the statements like he is omniscient and ruler of all, etc., become quite logical. Sutra 6 Chititanma Trena Tadat Chitti in consciousness, tatmatrena, as that much, that is, consciousness only, tat atmakatvat, that being its real nature, iti, this, is what, audulomihi, audulomi says. Translation. Audulomi says that the liberated soul becomes established in consciousness as consciousness itself, that being its true nature. Although the attributes, such as freedom of sin, etc., are enumerated as though they are different from one another, still they are based on false concepts arising from dependence on mere words, for all that can be understood there is a mere negation of sin, etc., the real nature of the soul, however, is consciousness alone, so that it is proper that the liberated soul should be established in that nature only. And thus only the Upanishadic texts like, Even so, my dear, is the self without interior and exterior, entire and pure intelligence alone. Brihararanyaka 4.5.13 Become duly honored. Even though... Having true desires, satyakama, etc., are spoken of as if they are real attributes belonging intrinsically to some entity in the derivative sense of he that is possessed of true desire, 
Still, such attributes are dependent on association with limiting adjuncts, so that they cannot constitute the true nature of the entity like consciousness. For the self is denied to have many forms, inasmuch as a diversity of forms is denied about Brahman, in the aphorism, even from difference of place, a twofold characteristic cannot be predicated of Brahman. Sutra 3 to 11. Hence, even the declaration about eating, etc., Chandogya 8.12.3, is made merely for praise, meaning thereby only an absence of sorrow. And this is just like the phrases, delighting in his own self, Chandogya 8.25.2, etc. For any delight, play, or merrymaking can never be described as happening in the self in the primary sense, since all these presuppose the presence of a second entity. Hence, the teacher Audulomi thinks that the freed soul manifests itself as the self, in which there is no trace of phenomenal existence, which is consciousness itself, which is serene and happy, and which defies all verbal description. Sutra 7 Evam apyupanyasat Purva bhava da virodhang badarayanaha evam api even so aviredhang there is no contradiction purva bhavat owing to the persistence of the earlier nature upanyasat in accordance with the Upanishadic reference badarayanaha says badarayana Translation, Badarayana says that even so, there is no contradiction since the earlier nature exists according to Upanishadic reference. Even so, even though it be admitted that the soul manifests itself in its own real nature of pure consciousness, still its possession of the earlier form, the divine majesty of the qualified Brahman that is known from such reasons as Upanishadic reference is not denied from the empirical point of view, and hence there is no contradiction. This is what the teacher Badarayana thinks. Namaste. So the context is that we're talking about the realized soul, the self-realized being, after liberation and after leaving the material body. What is his situation? What is his nature? How does he live? And what is his relationship with Brahman? Well, Jaimini has an opinion and Audulomi has an opinion. <laughs> but Bhararayana, which means Vyasadev, the compiler of the Vedas, his opinion is like both. He affirms both that the individual soul manifests all the qualities of Brahman and also still retains some individuality in order to have a relationship with Brahman. So he's talking about more like a spectrum or a range of qualities rather than extreme unity or extreme duality between the soul and Brahman. And this is also my experience. I mean, I can't comment on any of this stuff um, from a you know philosophical point of view and make any pronouncements because I'm only human and so my intelligence is, is blocked. I can't see beyond death except through the eyes of the scripture. And whatever inner experiences I have. So in my experience, the experiences have always come first. And the understanding later, often much later, years, <laughs> decades later. Uh, that on the spiritual path, actually, in my experience, the Lord has been the one to initiate the steps or stages of the relationship. 
And this goes all the way back to 1975, 76, when I was in Mayapur, West Bengal, near Navdweep. In the beginning of the ISKCON Mayapur community there, and having these wild kirtans, and I would get visions of this half man, half lion. And at first I thought it was Narasimha Dev, but then later events showed that that was not so because, well, there's a saying, Vishnu Aishwarya Priya, Shiva Abhishek Priya, that Vishnu loves opulence. He loves formality, ceremony, rules and regulations. But Shiva, he just likes to be bathed. <laughs> he likes to have the Ganges water poured over his head in a nice steady stream, along with mantras and, you know, so many things. So Shiva's taste is more simple, more direct, more personal, I think. I mean, again, I'm speaking from experience that after 1975, then it was 1984, uh, nine years later in Portland, when Shakti came to me and gave me Shakti pot, opened up my third eye. And in that experience, I could see Brahman in the world, in other words, Brahman as the substrate and the world built on top of it. But I could also see the world in Brahman, that actually everything is simply Brahman. Everything is simply consciousness. And Brahman is one. So <laughs> both are true simultaneously. It just depends on how you look at it. That has been my experience, you know, from almost from the beginning. So why do we want a relationship with Brahman? Huh? Because Brahman in whatever form he manifests, he or she, right, is just perfect for that individual being that soul. Like for me, he manifests as a lion. Sometimes he's like a half man, half lion, like Narasimha. Sometimes he's like full on lion. <laughs> and uh, we shared a video some time ago and the cover picture was of him approaching me uh, in his celestial form as the original lion. <laughs> but when I got regular Shiva Darshan, which was not until, basically until I had lived in Tiruvannamalai for a couple of years, uh, then I recognized him by my experience with the lion form. How is that? Their moods are identical. The mood, you know, the re mood in relationship is like intimate friendship, unconditioned friendship. So in that mood, uh, well, there are different symptoms. There are joking words. Uh, there are shared experiences adventures like that, uh, different types of play. And, you know, like boys play, they, they have all kinds of games that they just invent. And there's no rules except that there's no rules. <laughs> so they just make it up as they go along. And whatever pleases them. 
And this is like the relationship of the soul with God in the spiritual world. That there are no rules, but the only rule is that everything is based on love. Everything is beautiful. Uh, and that this relationship is eternal within the bounds of the manifested universe, which is a long, long time. But it does come to an end eventually. And at that time, all the devotees merge into the Brahman, along with the various deity forms as well. That's the way it's got to be. It's like breathing. You breathe in and you breathe out, you know. So the breathing out, well, even this is described in the Puranas. When uh, Narayana, Mahavishnu, lies down on the causal ocean and goes to sleep, that when he breathes out, all the planetary systems expand from his breath. And when he breathes in, <laughs> they all go back, enter again within his body. And that is the night of Brahma, when all the lower planetary systems are destroyed. Then again, when he breathes out, the whole manifestation comes back into being. So, you know, this is God-level stuff. <laughs> These kind of pastimes or these kind of phenomena can only manifest through the inconceivable, infinite power of God. Because he is basically dreaming the creation. This is his dream. And we are actors in that dream. So he is enjoying through this. And he, he's enjoying with his created beings. There's nothing wrong with that because it's pure. Pure means that no matter what God does, he does not become affected by sin. And the same is true of the realized soul. So they can have all kinds of adventures. They can do anything within or beyond the bounds of our imagination and philosophy, <laughs> but that does not make them impure. That does not make them sinful. They are not then subject to karma or reactions for their activities, but they remain in the transcendental realm until the end of the universe. Well, actually forever, because then they merge with the unconditioned Brahman. So this is the spiritual world. And as you progress on the spiritual path, all this will be revealed to you. God will come to you in whatever form that you have a relationship with. And the, the mood and everything will be just perfect for you. So this is what you have to look forward to. Aum Tat Sat. Aum Shakti Aum Aum Namah Shivaya <laughs>